Hi everyone, how is everyone doing? Today I'm gonna talk to you about something really, really, really nice, and I've been waiting for that for a few months now. You might have seen that on Twitter, Twitter, C-O-N-D-U-C-T-R, that's his name. His name is Conductor, C-O-N-D-U-C-T-R. It's an iPad app, like, there's a lot of them, but this one is different. It's like, like, um, like E.T. is different from any other human being. This one is different because it's modular. And by modular, I mean, I mean that you can change the screen on a way you want. You can divide it in four different parts. You can have your clip view in one part of the screen and the effects uh, on another part. Then you can have the mixer on another part. Then you can have four different, four, four different views at the same time. And that's really live oriented because you can change the view in like two taps. On two seconds, you can change the whole modules. So first thing to do, uh, just get to Conductor website and download their server. server. And then you can download the app for the iPad. So get to Conductor.net. I think it's .net. I'm not sure, but I think it's .net. You can Google it on Google. Yeah, Google it on Google, C-O-N-D-U-C-T-R, and then you'll get it. So it's conductor.net. Yeah, it's a .net. We have a winner. When you're on the website, you can go to download and download the server, install it, and then download the app, pay it. Don't forget to pay it because they worked for that. Uh, it's pretty expensive, but I hope it's going to be cheaper in a while. But um, it's new. It's new and it's worth it. So now, uh, you launch the server on your computer and uh, then launch the app on the iPad. You can see that now I can see the server. You can see why is the MacBook Pro server. Click it to, to select it. Now it's, it's communicating. Yeah, it's communicating. So now, now that the server is running on your Mac or any computer you're running, uh, go in live, live preferences, MIDI and added under the control surface. You had conductor and everything's running. That's just working. It's fine now. Everything's working. L not like in the ancient times when you had Lemur oscillator and all those ones. You had to set up those things for hours and then you could only do what the conductor can do in a few taps. So I'm not advertising. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. But I like it. I really liked it. So, now that's everything working, um, you're in the main interface. You get pretty much nothing in there. You can see that there's a project called Test on Mine, but there's no, that, no, there's no project called Test on yours. So you add one. You can give it a classy one, like a really nice. Uh, Churros is for penguins would be nice. So, yeah, Churros is for penguins. It's, it's, it's the best one I could come up with. You added a name. You have a name for your project, and it's Churros for Penguins. Uh, a good thing would be to give it the same name as the Ableton project you're working with. It's easier to find afterwards. So uh, now uh, click on Go to Playground, and you have the main Playground interface, and that's divided in four parts. Every time you open it, it's going to open like that. Now. Uh, the great advantage is that it's modulable. So you can put whatever you want on any of the four views in full screen, half screen, or quarter screen. Uh, to choose that, uh, you go on the top left corner, there's a little icon with nine squares. So tap on this one. Yeah, you tapped it. And in there, you get the three modules created uh, by conductor, conductor creators. So, uh, the clip view is pretty much the same as a launchpad. You have the two rows representing my two tracks. You can add tracks. So, uh, Apple T, it's going to add tracks in real time. And now you can see that it, it appears right away. Well, it should be appearing right away. And when you rename, it's going to rename right away. It, sh it, should, it should be in real time. So now it's a little bit small. I'm going to put it in full screen. I click on the square that puts it 
in the full screen. If you put your finger on the right row, you can move it up and down. If you put your finger on the top row, you can move it, move it left to right. Uh, I'm gonna add a few tracks now. Ta-da! You can see that it's gonna be added. It, it should be headed in real time. Sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool anyway. You don't want it to be for full screen, because if you leave it full screen, you'd better buy a launch pad, it's easier to use. So, you can put it on half screen, and then you have other things to put on the bottom. So now, so today I did a list with everything I had to tell you. So here's my sheet of paper, here's the clip view. If you want to play a clip, uh, push on the clip, it's going to play the clip. If you want to stop the clip, clip on any uh, empty case in that row, and that's going to stop the clip. If you want to stop the row, push on the stop button on the bottom of the row, and if you want to stop everything, you have a stop button of the bottom right corner, and that stops everything. That's it. That stops everything. So now, if you want to lo launch a scene, it's exactly as in the launch pad. You click on the right row with those little arrows and it launches the whole scene, which is only one clip for me. But that's a scene. Anyone has a different scene? Mm, I hope it didn't stop my recording. This was the clip view. So now, so now we can put something else on the bottom of the screen. You want to see a mixer, for example, so I clip on the nine squares button and then I choose mixer. Then I get my mixer on the bottom of my screen and that's really cool. I'm gonna put it in half screen. Now, you can see that uh, we've got modulation in real time and that's a really cool thing because most of the time, I mean like two years ago, this was really hard to get. So I'm gonna check out my sheet to know what I'm I'm gonna have to tell you. Folding groups, yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, creating a group. So when you want to create a group, you create a few tracks. You select them, you right click, and then you group tracks. You have a group. It's grouped tracks. So as you can see, there's a group. There's a track of my group, and there's the tracks in my group. So if I want to fold it, I click on the group track and it's gonna group. If I wanna unfold it, I'm, I click again and it's gonna unfold. And if I do it again, it's gonna do it again. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's just great. Ne next thing. Uh, there's one more thing that was a problem at first because I didn't read the manual. So when you're in clip view and you're moving that clip view from left to right, yeah, you can see that the mixer is not moving with it. So you have track 9 just above uh, the track 6 of your mixer. And when you're live, that could be a problem because you have other things to think about, like drinking beers and that's it, pretty much. So if you want to simplify that and you want them to match, there's a really cool thing. You double click on the master button of the top right corner and then you click on the master button of the top right corner of the bottom section and now everything is linked and it's moving together and that's great. I said great and cool uh, a lot of times but that's great and cool. That's the last time I hope. So now I'm gonna put the mixer view in full screen and there's another thing that's great. There's a bottom um, with four lines on the bottom left of the screen and if you push it you have another view where, where you can arm rack your tracks, solo your tracks, uh, pan left to right. Mm. Yeah. There's something else, there's a lock button. And if you push on that uh, lock button on, on the bottom right corner, uh, you won't be able to move your master fader level. And that's cool because that's something you don't want to happen when you're playing live. That, that's something that could be really dangerous in life. And there's another button, and that button would be the limiter button, just above it. And when you click that, uh, you won't be... You won't... What? What? What won't you be? You, you won't be. No, that's limiting your signal to 0 dB on your master channel. That's it. That's cool. I wouldn't use it. Uh, other things. Smart faders. That's a nice thing. 
when you move a fader, uh, like uh, you move it down and then you want it back to zero, you just double tap on zero and it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna get back to zero just just right away. That's nice. You don't have to, to push it slowly to get back to zero. Just double tap zero, it's gonna be there. Now let's go to master view. Uh, you've got the usual functions, Q master cross fader, A, B, yeah. double tap the middle, it's gonna get back to the middle of the cross fader, tap tempo over the place top, that's it, everything, everything you need is in there. Um, next thing, let's wait, I'm gonna have a break, one, two, break done. Now, something else that took me a lot of time at first, because once again, I didn't read the manual. If you want to get back to the edit module page, uh, just push on the nine square button that we've seen before to choose the modules. And on the bottom, you have uh, the last icon. When you push it, you get back to your module area. You can add a new module, like um, a custom module. So I'm gonna add one. I push add, and then I have a break again. I'm back. It's great. It's cre it created a new module that I'm gonna rename. I'm gonna rename it. Um, it's gonna be Churras. Now, what you can do, you you can push add, and you're gonna have any parameter that you want. Uh, you choose it from a list, but that's a bit a, a little bit long and boring to do. Uh, there's something easier and better to do. That's the learn button. So you click on learn and then it's waiting for you to push on any parameter you want to to be mapped to the module. So uh, you get to Ableton Live and you move, uh, for example, your sent A and it's it's been it's been, what has it been doing? Uh, now now it's learned that you want it to map send A to that module one. You can do the same with send B. And it's working. Everything's been mapped. And now it's in your module. So it got the name back to module one. That's not okay, but it's okay. Because they told me that they would fix it. It's already on review on the App Store. So you might get it in a few, a few times, seconds, weeks, days. I don't know. So now I'm going to click on the module section. I've got everything I need. It's working now. My two cents are there and I can, I can increase and decrease them and it's working. Delay, delay, reverb. I think that's it. I think we've covered the basics. Um, there's something else. When you're a user module, there's a small circle. If you click on there, you can uh, change the parameters value without looking at the iPad screen. When you use one finger, you're gonna change the first parameter. Uh, with two fingers, you're gonna move the second one. Uh, three, the third, four, the fourth, and five, the fifth. Five, the fifth. That's, that's hard to say. Um, that's it. I'm sorry uh, if I wasn't that great, but I had to translate it from French to English and I sucked at that. But I hope you learned something from that today. And, uh, oh yeah, there's a problem. There's one problem that's got to be fixed. It's the, the mapping. You know, you don't, you can't choose a bottom and a top value. Like on an EQ, you would be the bottom value to be 100 hertz and the top value to be like 10k. Uh, you can't do that, at least yet. I hope they're gonna revise it, change it and add it. So hopefully it's gonna be in the next versions. Now get to the App Store, buy the app, download the server, install and do what everything I said. Bye! <laughs>